Michael Martin Murphy, Wikipedia article audio. Michael Martin Murphy is an American singer-songwriter best known for writing and performing Western music, country music, and popular music. A multiple Grammy nominee, Murphy has six gold albums, including Cowboy Songs, the first album of cowboy music to achieve gold status since Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs by Marty Robbins in 1959. He has recorded the hit singles Wildfire, Carolina in the Pines, What's Forever For, A Long Line of Love, What She Wants, Don't Count the Rainy Days, and Maybe This Time. Murphy is also the author of New Mexico's State Ballad, The Land of Enchantment. Murphy has become a prominent musical voice for the Western horseman, rancher, and cowboy. Early Life Songwriter Success Austin Slash Outlaw Country Years Wildfire and the Epic Years Mainstream Success Cowboy Songs Bluegrass Years Legacy Political Views Honors and Awards Discography Archival Materials Michael Martin Murphy was born on March 14, 1945, to Pink Laverie Murphy and Lois Murphy, in the Oak Cliff section of Dallas, Texas, where he grew up. He has a brother Mark who is three years younger. When he was six years old, he started riding horses on his grandfather's and uncle's ranches. Years later he would remember sleeping on his grandfather's porch under the stars listening to the older man's stories and cowboy songs. He enjoyed being around these men of the land as they went about their work. These experiences made a deep impression on the young boy. During these early years, he developed a special love for cowboy songs and stories. He was also an avid reader especially drawn to the books of Mark Twain and William Faulkner. As a youth, he enjoyed writing poetry and loved listening to his uncle's old 78 RPM records particularly the music of country and folk artists such as Hank Williams, Bob Wills, and Woody Guthrie. In junior high school, he began performing as an amateur and later as a camp counselor at a summer camp called Sky Ranch. At the age of 17, he took his first professional music job, playing western songs around a campfire at a Texas ranch. By the early 1960s, Murphy was playing the clubs in Dallas, performing country music, folk music, and rock music. He won over the conservative Texas audiences with his charm and talent, and soon formed a band that developed a significant following in the Dallas area. After graduating from W.H. Adamson High School in Oak Cliff, Murphy studied Greek at the University of North Texas and joined the folk music club where he met Stephen Fromals. Ray Wiley Hubbard, Spencer Perskin, and Eddie Wilson co-founder of Armadillo World Headquarters. Murphy then moved to California, where he studied creative writing at the University of California at Los Angeles, majoring in medieval history and literature. He signed a publishing contract with the Sparrow Music Company, and soon he made a name for himself in the Los Angeles folk music scene. By 1964, he formed a musical group with an old Texas friend, Michael Nesmith, John London, and John Rains, under the name the Trinity River Boys. Muffy's first big break came through his friend Michael Nesmith, who had become part of the popular television musical group, The Monkees. Nesmith asked Murphy to write them a song for the next Monkees album, and Murphy composed What Am I Doing Hanjin Round. The album Pisces, Aquarius, 
Capricorn and Jones Limited sold over 5 million copies. Murphy formed the Lewis and Clark Expedition with Boomer Castleman, and recorded one self-titled album for Colgems Records, the company that also released the Monkees LPS. They had a modest hit with I Feel Good. Boomer Castleman went on to find success with his controversial song Judy May and as the writer and producer of the million-selling novelty hit Telephone Man for singer Mary Wilson. In 1968, Murphy moved to Wrightwood, a village in the San Gabriel Mountains adjacent to the Mojave Desert of California to work on his songwriter. Based on the success of his songs, he signed a contract with the Screen Gems Company, the publishing arm of Columbia Pictures. Some of his songs were recorded by Flat and Scruggs and Bobby Gentry. Kenny Rogers recorded an entire album of Michael Murphy songs called The Ballad of Calico, about a Mojave Desert ghost town. Murphy wrote some additional songs for the Monkees, but he grew disillusioned with the poor financial rewards and the Southern California music scene. In 1971, Murphy returned to Texas and became part of the so-called outlaw country movement, playing alongside other maverick performers such as Willie Nelson and Jerry Jeff Walker. He created a unique sound that combined his country, rock, and folk influences. It was during this period that Murphy wrote Geronimo's Cadillac, a song about Native American rights that later became an unofficial anthem for the American Indian movement in the early 1970s. In 1971, Murphy was signed to A&M Records by Bob Johnston, who discovered him in a Dallas club, the Rubaiyat. Johnston had produced some of the country's most popular recording artists, including Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, and Simon and Garfunkel. In 1972, Johnston produced Muffy's first album Geronimo's Cadillac in Nashville, Tennessee. The sound of the album reflects Muffy's love of country, folk, and blues music. Muffy's early gospel influences are also evident throughout the album. The title track was released as a single, and reached the top 40 on the U.S. pop charts. In addition to the title track, the album included Boy From The Country, What Am I Doin' Hangin' Around, and Michael Angelo's Blues. Rolling Stone magazine proclaimed, on the strength of his first album alone, Michael Murphy is the best new songwriter in the country. In 1973, Murphy followed up with the album Cosmic Cowboy Souvenir, which continued the urban cowboy theme of the first album. The album included Cosmic Cowboy, PT1, Alleys of Austin, and Rolling Hills. Throughout this period, Muffy's band included Bob Livingston and Gary P. Nunn, the author of London Homesick Blues. He performed a number of times at the Armadillo World Headquarters, and his photo was even used for the original cover of Jan Reed's book, The Improbable Rise of Redneck Rock. But Michael Muffy's musical vision was expanding beyond the confines of the outlaw country sound and moving toward a much more ambitious musical tapestry. In 1973, Murphy signed to Epic Records and released the album Michael Murphy that same year. Produced by Bob Johnston, the album included the orchestra anthem Nobody's Gonna Tell Me How to Play My Music and the beautiful Southwestern Pilgrimage. In 1975, Murphy released his seminal album, Blue Sky Night Thunder, also produced by Bob Johnston. The album generated two hit singles, Carolina in the Pines and his platinum-certified signature song Wildfire a sentimental song about the ghosts of a woman and her horse. As a boy, he first heard from his grandfather the story of a ghost horse rescuing people in the desert. Years later, 
Murphy had a dream about this ghost horse and wrote the words and music the same day with songwriter Larry Kanzler. In the summer of 1975, Wildfire became a chart-topping hit, reaching number two in Cash Box and number three on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, as well as number one on the adult contemporary charts, giving Murphy a new level of commercial success and exposure. It immediately sold over one million copies, and was awarded a gold disc by the RIAA in July 1975. It eventually surpassed two million in U.S. sales and was awarded a platinum disc by the RIAA in September 2001. The song's harmonies were supplied by Jeff Hanna and Jimmy Ibbotson from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, and the piano introduction and ending coda played by jazz pianist J.A.C. Murphy. The introduction is based on a piece by the Russian classical composer Alexander Skriabin. During the late 1970s, he recorded four albums, Swans Against the Sun, Flowing Free Forever, Lone Wolf, and Peaks, Valleys, Honky Tonks and Alleys. The album Swans Against the Sun produced his first country hit Say Mansion on the Hill, Flowing Free Forever, and Cherokee Fiddle, which also became a top ten hit for Johnny Lee. Muffy's friends, John Denver, Willie Nelson, Charlie Daniels, and Steve Weisberg appeared on the album. In 1981, Murphy made his first film appearance in Hard Country, which he co-wrote. To distinguish himself from actor Michael Murphy, the singer began using his middle name for film and music credits. To this day, he is known as Michael Martin Murphy. In 1982, Murphy signed with Liberty Records and produced two original albums, Michael Martin Murphy and The Heart Never Lies, as well as a compilation of re-recorded versions of his A&M, Epic, and Liberty hits called The Best of Michael Martin Murphy. In the early 1980s, Murphy had significant commercial success with hits like Still Taking Chances, Disenchanted, don't Count the Rainy Days, Will It Be Love by Morning, Radio Land, Maybe This Time, and the number one hit What's Forever For, written by Rafe Van Hoy, which also crossed over to number three at AC Radio and number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100 Pop Singles chart. In 1983, Murphy was voted Best New Male Vocalist of the Year by the Academy of Country Music. In 1985, his re-recorded version of Carolina in the Pines reached the top ten. In 1985, Murphy signed a new recording contract with Warner Brothers Records and continued his streak of successful recordings. In 1986, he released the album Tonight We Ride, which included Rollin' Nowhere, Fiddlin' Man, and Santa F.E. Cantina. In 1987, he released the album Americana, which included Once Upon a Time, My Darling Wherever You Are, and another number one country hit with the song A Long Line of Love. That same album produced the hit single A Face in the Crowd with Holly Dunn, which was nominated for a Grammy Award. In 1988, Murphy released the album River of Time, which produced three hit singles that reached number three on the charts, Jesse Winchester's I'm Going to Miss You, Girl, His Own from the Word Go, and Tolkien to the Wrong Man, which featured his son Ryan. In 1989, Murphy closed out a successful decade of recording with the album Land of Enchantment, which contained Never Given Up on Love, Got to Pay the Fiddler, Route 66, and Land of Enchantment, which became New Mexico's state ballad. Despite the impressive critical and commercial success he achieved throughout the 1980s, 
Michael Martin Muffy's creative heart and spirit began to focus on the Western music that first captured his imagination as a boy growing up in Texas. As early as 1985, Murphy performed with the New Mexico Symphony in a show called A Night in the American West, which led to many subsequent performances with American and Canadian symphonies, including the National Symphony Orchestra of Washington, D.C. These Western shows, and the songs he was writing and recording at the time, presaged a major change in Muffy's career. In 1990, he released the album Cowboy Songs. The album contained Muffy's versions of old cowboy songs from the public domain such as Tumbling Tumbleweeds, The Old Chisholm Trail, The Beautiful Spanish is the Loving Tongue, the classic The Streets of Laredo, and his tip of the hat to Roy Rogers, Happy Trails. The album contained Muffy's own cowboy logic. Murphy was reluctant to promote the project, but he eventually released Cowboy Logic as a single and it quickly became a hit. Soon after, the album caught on and sold much better than expected. Cowboy songs earned widespread praise from country and folk music critics, such as Jack Hurst from the Chicago Tribune who wrote, not only one of the finest albums of year but also one of the finest of the last decade. Its 22 riveting cuts represent a labor of not only love but also scholarship, it raises a cult musical genre to the level of mainstream art. Cowboy Songs went on to achieve gold status, the first Western album to do so since Marty Robbins' number one Cowboy in 1980. In 1991, Murphy followed up with two additional albums of Cowboy Songs. His innovative concept album, Cowboy Christmas, Cowboy Songs 2, contained versions of traditional and original Western Christmas songs including The Christmas Trail, The Cowboy Christmas Ball, and Two Step Round the Christmas Tree. An accompanying video was later released of one of Muffy's Cowboy Christmas Ball concerts, which included many of these songs. Cowboy Songs 3 contained a mix of traditional and original cowboy songs, including a virtual duet with Marty Robbins, Big Iron, which used an early Marty Robbins vocal track. Cowboy songs and its follow-up albums were so successful that they inspired the formation of Warner Western, a new subsidiary label of Warner Brothers. Records devoted to Western music and cowboy poetry. In 1992, Warner Western issued albums by Don Edwards, Waddy Mitchell, and the Sons of the San Joaquin. All three records were produced by Murphy. In 1995, Murphy further demonstrated his musical ambitions with the concept album Sagebrush Symphony, recorded live with the San Antonio Symphony Orchestra, Herb Jeffries, and the Sons of the San Joaquin. In 1997, he released the album The Horse Legends, a musical tribute to this majestic animal. The album included several new Murphy songs, a new version of Wildfire, and covers of some well-known songs, such as Dan Fogelberg's Run for the Roses and Gordon Lightfoot's The Pony Man. In 1998, Murphy left Warner Brothers Records and started his own record label, Westfest slash Real West Productions. That year, he released Cowboy Songs 4, which contained both traditional and original cowboy songs, including Utah Carol, Little Joe, The Wrangler, and Muffy's song from Lonesome Dove. In 1999, he released Acoustic Christmas Carols, Cowboy Christmas 2, which included Muffy's quiet renditions of traditional Christmas songs, and featured his son Ryan and daughter Laura. In 2001, Murphy released a compilation of some of his best-loved songs, 
playing favorites, which included re-recorded versions of such songs as Carolina in the Pines, Cherokee Fiddle, Cowboy Logic, What's Forever For, and Wildfire. He followed this up in 2002 with Cowboy Classics, playing Favorites 2, which again included re-recorded versions of some of his best-loved Cowboy songs. That same year, Murphy released Cowboy Christmas 3, which contained a new original song The Kill Pen, as well as original Cowboy poetry written and recited by his daughter Karen. In 2004, Murphy released Live at Billy Bob's Texas, and in 2006, he released Heartland Cowboy, Cowboy Songs, Volume 5. Murphy has championed Western cowboy culture and the wilderness. In 1986 he founded West Fest, an annual music festival held at Copper Mountain, Colorado that celebrates Western art and culture. Molly Carpenter, writing in the Richmond Times-Dispatch, noted, Muffy's love for the American West clearly comes through in his songs, painted with vivid images of the rugged mountains and vast deserts of southwest landscapes, all evidence of his travels from his native Texas to California's Mojave Desert, Colorado's Rockies and the wild diversity of New Mexico, his home for the past ten years. During the 1990s, in a further effort to preserve the traditions of the West, Murphy led a group of performers including cowboy poet Waddy Mitchell and Western music historian and troubadour Don Edwards in a series of improvisational concerts called Cowboy Logic, which toured throughout the United States, including such unlikely locations as New York City and Las Vegas. Waddy Mitchell is the co-founder of the National Cowboy Poetry Gathering. Murphy met Mitchell there in 1986, the first such event he had ever attended. He later described the transforming event as a religious experience. I'd been collecting cowboy music and performing it among my friends. But when I saw a lot of other guys like me and also women performing this music and enjoying each other's company, it was the most important thing that had happened to me in years in my musical life. On May 22, 2007, he made a rare appearance in New York City to perform Wildfire on The Late Show with David Letterman. The song had become one of Letterman's favorites and was included regularly on the show. That same month, Murphy organized and performed for John Wayne's 100th birthday celebration, with the approval of the John Wayne family. Murphy was commended by the White House for his activities. Later that year, he released three DVDs detailing his love of the cowboy ways, life, and preservation of the American West traditions. The DVDs document his trail rides, cattle drives, and cowboy poetry gatherings. One of Muffy's Cowboy Christmas Ball concerts, recorded in Oklahoma City, was included as a fourth DVD in the combination CD-slash-DVD set. In December 2007, Murphy released A Soldier's Christmas based on a poem by Michael E. Marx, a soldier serving in Iraq. Marx sent the poem to Murphy, who was so moved by the poem he sought permission to set it to music, which he did. He started including the song in all his concerts, including his Cowboy Christmas Ball concerts, to long-standing ovations after its performance, which prompted its release in December 2007. In February 2009, Murphy released Buckaroo Bluegrass, which marked a return to his bluegrass musical roots. Muffy's love of bluegrass music dates back to when he sang lead vocals with the Earl Scruggs Band. Over the years, his songs have been recorded by bluegrass artists such as Flat and Scruggs, Doyle Lawson, and Quicksilver, The Country Gentleman, 
and the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. On Buckaroo Bluegrass, Murphy offers new versions of his famous bluegrass songs, such as Carolina in the Pines, Fiddlin' Man, Lost River, and What Am I Doing Hanging Around. Murphy also includes new bluegrass versions of several of his classics, such as Boy from the Country, Dancing in the Meadow, and Healing Spring. The album includes two new songs, Close to the Land, the theme song of the PBS documentary television series America's Heartland, and Lone Cowboy a song that reflects Muffy's experiences as a solo artist performing throughout the West at music festivals, cowboy gatherings, historical theaters, and trail rides. Michael's son, Ryan, produced the album, and added acoustic guitar and vocals. In February 2010, Murphy released a follow-up album, Buckaroo Bluegrass 2 Riding Song, which follows the production approach of the first album. In May 2011, Murphy gave a benefit concert at the Prairie Rose Chuck Wagon Supper near Benton, Kansas to help save the cabin where Brewster Higley wrote the song Home on the Range, Kansas State Song. He might have been living anywhere, Murphy noted, but he was inspired by that place. This song gives focus to the heritage of the American West, to the prairie and its songs, poems, and literature. Murphy made his first pilgrimage to the cabin prior to the concert, where he performed the song. In June 2011, Murphy released Tall Grass and Cool Water, subtitled Cowboy Songs 6 and Buckaroo Blue Grass 3. The CD includes two classics from the Sons of the Pioneers, Cool Water and Way Out There, as well as other Western classics such as Texas Cowboy, Santa F.E. Trail, and the James Gang Trilogy. Murphy closes out the album with a beautiful duet with Karen Murray, Springtime in the Rockies. On September 4, 2011, Murphy performed at the wedding of longtime friend David Lauren and Lauren Bush, the niece of former President George W. Bush, at Ralph Lauren's Double RL Ranch near Ridgeway, Colorado. The event was called America's Royal Wedding. Murphy, who helped Ralph Lauren find the ranch they now call home, has been friends with the Lauren family for nearly 30 years. I go there to write songs from time to time, Murphy noted, it's the most spectacular ranch in the Rockies. At David Lauren's request, Murphy performed Vanishing Breed for the couple's first dance. Murphy wrote the song at a cabin on the Lauren Ranch in the 1980s. Murphy and his Rio Grande band played nearly six hours for the Lauren and Bush families. In January 2012, Tall Grass and Cool Water became the number one album on the Top 20 Western Music Albums chart of the Western Music Association. In July 2013, Murphy released Red River Drifter, his first album of all new original songs in 20 years. The album reached number three on the Billboard Top Bluegrass Albums chart. He was named among the top 50 greatest country and western singers by American Cowboy magazine. Murphy has had a successful music career that has spanned four decades and included such musical genres as folk, country, rock, popular, western, and cowboy music. As a singer, songwriter, and producer, he has contributed some of the best-loved songs of his generation. His songs have been recorded by Johnny Cash, Kenny Rogers, John Denver, Cher, Lyle Lovett, Flat and Scruggs, Claire Hamill, Hoyt Axton, Roger Miller, Bobby Gentry, Michael Nesmith, and The Monkees. 
Murphy is the narrator of the short film Spirit of the Cowgirl at the National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame in Fort Worth, Texas. Murphy played a major role in the resurrection of the cowboy song genre, recording and producing some of the most successful cowboy music of the past 40 years. His album Cowboy Songs inspired a whole series of albums. For his accomplishments in the Western and cowboy music field, Murphy received five awards from the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, formerly known as the National Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City. Murphy has long been a champion of the Western wilderness and wildlife, and has lent his support to various political causes associated with Western culture and ideals. Early in his career, for example, he supported the Native American rights movement, which used his song, Geronimo's Cadillac, as an anthem. In 1986, he founded an annual festival, West Fest, celebrating Western art and culture in an effort to preserve the traditions of the West. He has been a longtime supporter of the conservation movement, attempting to find a middle ground between ranchers and activists on opposite sides of environmental issues. Murphy campaigned for George W. Bush in 2004. In the past decade, Murphy has focused his political energies on the issue of private property rights especially in the western and southwestern United States. In 2006, he released the Ballad of Kit Laney in support of the New Mexico ranchers' fight with the United States Forest Service over water rights. Laney was imprisoned for assault after standing up to federal agents who seized his ranch in 2004. Murphy helped form the Farmers' Freedom Agriculture Alliance and scheduled a Benefit the Farmers' Freedom concert to protest unfair land acquisitions across the western states. Muffy's opposition to the political forces threatening the American family farmer and rancher transcends political party affiliation. I can tell you, Murphy observed, that politics doesn't matter whether it's Democrats or Republicans have been involved with big agribusiness for a long, long time. <laughs>